Rumor has it that the M110 engine inside this 1975 Mercedes 280SL is so smooth that when it's running properly, you can balance a coin on the engine block and it won't fall over. We're gonna be putting that to the test in this video, but before we can do that, we need to diagnose an engine misfire, which this car's just developed. One of the first and easiest things you can do to identify a misfire is with the engine running, just pull these spark plug um, leads off one by one. Pull the first one off and can you hear the engine note changing? If you can, that's probably not the um, problem cylinder. So put that spark plug lead back on and do that with every one until you identify which cylinder or cylinders are the ones given the problem. Well, the uh, camera will pick up this, but we're gonna start the car and then start taking the spark plug leads off. Hear that zoom, 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 and you can see the engine is slightly vibrating. So now I'm going to start off taking the first spark plug lead off, and you should hear the engine drop when I do that. So we know it's not the the first cylinder. We we'll just try that with the second. Heard the engine drop there as well. Let's try that with the third. There's no difference at all when I take that spark from the needle. Try the other ones. I don't know how well that came out in on camera but when I take this spark plug lead off here there is no change in engine um, tone the revs don't drop slightly so that means either that the spark plug is faulty that the ignition lead is faulty that the injector is faulty or hopefully <laughs> not the last option which means there's a problem with the compression in that cylinder. It is worth pointing out that on the Dejectronic cars underneath the distributor here you have a set of trigger points which basically are telling the ECU how fast the engine is going and how quickly to turn on and off the fuel injectors. Now on the M110 i.e. the six cylinder version of this engine those fuel injectors fire in two lots of three so three fuel injectors are firing at the same time. On the V8 engines on the Dejectronic cars, you've got four lots of two. Um, the reason for mentioning that is if the trigger points were dirty or faulty, you would expect three of the cylinders on this engine to have a, a problem. And similarly, if you're dealing with a V8 engine, you'd expect two of the cylinders to have a problem. So at this stage, I'm not gonna be looking at the tr trigger points on this engine. The first thing I'm going to do, a very simple test, is I'm just going to switch these spark plugs around between two of the cylinders and see if the problem jumps from one cylinder to another. If it did, that would tell us that the spark plug was the issue. Here is the spark plug here, and that spark plug actually looks wet to me, which implies that there is fuel getting to the um, cylinder. don't know how well you can see that, but can you see that glistening there? This is now in the cylinder three. That tells me that there is fuel in that cylinder, unburnt fuel. Very carefully put a piece of tissue down there. We can actually verify that. Sure enough, there's fuel on the end of that tissue. If you do suspect a flooded engine or a flooded cylinder, sometimes just taking one or more of these spark plugs out and leaving them out for a little while will sort out that problem as the fuel evaporates. What you want to try and avoid at all costs is a situation where you're having a buildup of unburnt fuel in the cylinder because what will happen is that fuel will either end up washing around the piston rings, washing all the oil off the cylinder wall and you can end up completely damaging and scoring your cylinder walls or worse still, you just get a buildup of fuel in the cylinder, then the piston tries to come up, compress that fuel, and you end up bending a rod because obviously liquids are not compressible. In that particular case, we've just used a series of these um, 
little swabs here to get as much of that fuel out. The cylinders are quite black and sooty, which is perhaps not surprising. First of all, these cars do have a propensity to run rich and in our particular case we've doing, been doing quite a few short journeys just while we test various things so it's not surprising if you take spark plugs out and they're a little bit sooty or the cylinders look a little bit sooty if you've just been doing short journeys especially in an older Dejectronic car. So now the moment of truth, we've swapped those two spark plugs over. Let's just fire up the engine and see what happens. So I can still hear a big misfire there. Let's just see what happens. Wow, so the problem has jumped to cylinder one, which means it looks like we have a faulty spark plug. So I think somewhere I have one of those spark plugs. So what we'll do is just swap, put a new spark plug in there and see if that cures the issue. And if so, we can move on and we've effectively dodged a bullet because that's a nice easy fix. Incidentally, if you found that the problem wasn't with the spark plug, and that there was no unburnt fuel in that cylinder, what you could do is put a little noid light on the actual fuel injector itself to see if the injector was getting an electric, electrical signal to fire, because of course it could be one of the injector wires, either the earth wire or the live wire that had a break or a fault. You can buy sets of noid lights, or you can just make up your own, and we've done a video on this channel about how to make up your own with plugs that interface with the Dejectronic fuel injectors, and then you'll be able to see all of these lights flashing for each cylinder. We've changed that spark plug for a new one. Let's see if that misfire has gone. M110 engines is running properly, you should be able to balance a coin on the engine block. Spark plugs do wear out over a period of time, but it is highly unusual for a good quality, genuine Bosch spark plug to fail so prematurely. One of the most common reasons why spark plug fail prematurely especially on older cars like this is if you're doing a series of short journeys or you're starting and stopping the car for testing purposes what you're doing especially with the Dejectronic engine is you're shooting a whole load of fuel into the chambers and you can end up coating the spark plug in carbon and insulating it and therefore the spark plug will no longer work. In our particular case, what we were doing just prior to this problem occurring was we were trying to diagnose an electrical problem and um, which whereby basically when you put the car in reverse, only one of the reverse lights is working and one of the indicators comes on instead of the reverse light. And in order to diagnose that problem, you have to have the engine running and then turn it off, do some tests, turn it on again, do some tests. And if you do that five, six, seven, eight, nine or ten times, you can dump a whole load of fuel in the engine and cause some rough running and possibly even in our particular case, end up ruining a spark plug. I don't think we've got any other serious issues with this engine, but the other things that can foul a spark plug is oil fouling. If your piston rings are worn, um, you can get oil fouling, that will stop a spark plug um, working. And also if you've got coolant leaks into the engine, that can also foul a spark plug. And as I mentioned, if you're just doing short journeys, your spark plugs, when you may never reach the temperature required to burn off all the carbon. And that's probably the most common cause of spark plugs failing. Having fixed the misfire on this car, we've just taken it for the first long run since I've had it up the motorway to see my parents. Let's just have a quick look and see what issues, if any, have come up on that. The first thing I notice straight away is the colour of our coolant, which is a beautiful 
rust brown. Now that's not surprising because if an engine has been sitting a long time without running, there's bound to be some rust buildup. So we will do a complete coolant flush on this car. Probably have to do that a couple of times. Maybe even put some thermo cure in the radiator system to actually bind with that rust and take it out. The other thing I noticed down here is this is the power steering hose here. It obviously has a pinhole in it, either that or the rubber is just perished after 50 years. So we'll need to try and source another one of those. I don't think they're available anymore. Still to sort out on this car are some of the interior trims, the under dash trims or the interior lights. We've got things like speaker covers, some of the aircon slider switches to fix and install. We've got to attach our seat belts and also the handbrake cables underneath the car which is a bit tricky with the exhaust in place. And then the last big thing is just probably taking the windscreen out and redoing those windscreen clips so I can put that bottom windscreen trim in and the windscreen wipers on this car.